Good morning. Welcome to the book of Exodus. We're in chapter 10, verses 12 to 20 today. Another plague. Let's see what it says. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come up on the land of Egypt and eat every plant of the land, even all that the hail has left. So Moses stretched out his staff over the land of Egypt, and the Lord directed an east wind on the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. The locusts came up over all the land of Egypt and settled in all the territory of Egypt. They were very numerous. There had never been so many locusts, nor would there be so many again. For they covered the surface of the whole land so that the land was darkened, and they ate every plant of the land and all the fruit of the trees that the hail had left. Thus nothing green was left on tree or plant of the field through all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh hurriedly called for Moses and Aaron, and he said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now, therefore, please forgive my sin only this once, and make supplication to the Lord your God, that he would only remove this death from me. He went out from Pharaoh and made supplication to the Lord. So the Lord shifted the wind to a very strong west wind, which took up the locusts and drove them into the Red Sea. Not one of the locusts was left in all the territory of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the sons of Israel go. So Pharaoh has not let God's people go. And so God launches plague number eight. The east wind brings in the locusts, and it's the most severe locust infestation that has ever been seen. Now it doesn't take too long here, and Pharaoh's calling for Moses again, and he sends out people. They must have found them quickly and bring Moses and Aaron in. And he asked them to remove this death. And maybe Pharaoh was referring to all the plagues, you know, the whole, the whole destruction, the whole trail of destruction that's come to this point. And is, is destroying Egypt. There's not a lot left here. Now, even though he's reneged again and again, uh, Moses does just what he says. He goes out, he prays to the Lord God. The wind changes, the locusts are driven out to the, to the, uh, to the ocean, and they perish. And what do you think happens after the locusts are removed? Well, you get Pharaoh refuses to relent. He changes direction again, and now he hardens down again, and he won't let the people go. So there we are, and the intensity of the plagues continues. Now, the evidence of Pharaoh's action shows us that, that his word at this point is entirely unreliable. Pharaoh's stubbornness and uh, determination to keep power over the Hebrews leaves him unwilling to do exactly the, the one thing that he must do. But he is absolutely stuck, stuck, stuck tight. He, he just is immovable. Isn't it the same for you and I? If we're determined to keep our own ways, instead of keeping God's ways, there's very little that God can really do for us. How willing are you to accept that God is God and that his ways for you are better than your ways for you? Some of us have to learn that over a period of time and lots of uh, needless, needless head crashing into the brick wall kind of stuff. We're our own worst enemies, but God loves us and he wants us to turn in the right direction.